I cannot wait to show you guys where I am right now. Like, I'm even excited to see it for myself because I arrived really late last night here at Bangwon Village in southwest Guizhou, and I think the view outside right now is going to be absolutely spectacular. Oh, wow. The sun has just come up over the mountains. It's lighting all of these villages here up in this like golden glow. This is Banwan Village. It's located in the southwest of Guizhou Province, historically one of the poorest regions in China. Originally built in the Ming Dynasty some five, six hundred years ago, this is one of the best preserved ancient villages of the Buyi ethnic minority who still live in this village to this day. But I haven't come alone. For this trip, I'm joined by my bestie. Jasmine, breakfast's getting cold. Morning. <laughs> and Jasmine is the reason I'm here because your cousin is living here right now, right? Yes. He's been here over 10 years helping with building schools, libraries. This is my brother. Wow! Uh, this is a very traditional house. This is a very traditional house. And this is a very traditional house. But it's not. So him and his team are in the process of making this village more attractive for tourists in order to increase the economy of the region. But a lot has happened here in the last four years. The village now has a bar, a cafe, even an outdoor gym, which is the cutest thing I've ever seen. This may be the coolest cinema I've seen. So I've got the screen over here and seating here. So the village has seen many changes in recent years, but one thing that remains constant is the local Buyi culture and customs. So we're gonna experience a day of Buyi Zhu. One of the most striking things about the Buyi ethnic minority is the beautiful traditional clothing that is still worn in day-to-day -day life by locals. Not to mention it's designed and crafted by hand here in Baiwan village. Today, Jasmine and I have been warmly invited to wear the local clothing. So that's going to be our first task, choosing an outfit. So now we're suitably attired, it's time to get to work. First task for the day, feeding and herding the local mountain goats. Gotta watch out for all the poop. Oh, they're all looking at me. All the goats are looking at me. They're so intense. Look at their little eyes. Oh, little pellets. Pellet poop. They call the goat poop a uh, wild peanut. <laughs> So our guide is about to cut some branches and leaves just to prepare to feed them. I'm going in! <laughs> There's so many eyes on me right now. I also got to hold this super cute baby goat to encourage it to drink milk from its mother. It's like a baby. Oh, it's like an actual baby. It cries too. Drink some milk, drink some milk. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, yay! Oh, <laughs> mom's not interested. <laughs> That's so cute, this one. Oh, loving the design. Do you have a name? We'll call him Balenciaga. <laughs> Balenciaga the goat. <laughs> then it was time to herd them out of the pen for some exercise in the mountains. I was instructed to move my arms like this, but why do I feel more like I'm about to land a plane than herd some goats? <笑>他们去哪儿我就要了他们就这样去有草的地方了继续吃草去了然后他们自己回来吗还是啊会回来就天黑了大家就会回家了 The goats always come back They got their favorite food at home 
oh. which is the salt. So it's incentive to come back. Yeah, they always <laughs> come back for the salt. I yeah. can relate. After our morning exertions, it was time to head back down the mountain for a well-deserved snack. But this too required some elbow grease. Okay, so we've got the sticky rice there. So we got to keep doing this until we can see no grains of rice left and then it'll be ready to eat. Well, it's getting stickier and stickier. It's making this funny noise. Eventually the sticky rice became the desired consistency and we could start making our snack. To make it, you basically grab a handful of sticky rice, flatten it out in your palm and then add the filling. So we're going to get a spoonful of this peanut brown sugar mix and make like a little like normie bods. But this was a group effort after all. We all got in there with the sticky rice and eventually we had a full table of dadzaba to munch on. Mm. Mm. The texture is so good. I feel like it's not like super chewy, but it has like a bit of resistance. And the inside is so good, like a sweet peanut mixture. Mm. 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 <laughs> Haven't got any peanut. So we filled up our leaf tablecloth here with lots and lots of zaba, and over here we've got another another batch coming. So we're gonna sit down here. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna join you guys. Watching a group of people go for. There's nothing like it. Jayo. <laughs> After four or five zaba and a stomach full of sticky rice, it was time to get back to work. This time we'll be helping out on one of the most important agricultural outputs of the village, brown sugar. First step, cutting down some sugar cane. Look at this knife, it's so intense. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna... I'm not very good at this. I feel like I'm just not very powerful as like a person. I've got like a more of a gentle energy. I'm just gonna put this down. Apparently, you can actually eat this sugar cane just as it is. I've never eaten this before. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to get a splinter in my mouth, so I'm being very careful how I eat this. I've since learned this is the reason why locals' teeth are so super pearly white and strong, they tell me. He can really act. <laughs> Gentle energy, I told you. This blondie wouldn't hurt a fly. But things weren't always that way. Nah, I still got the moves. Look at this. Hard work gets the job done. Yeah, this used to be full of sugar cane. <laughs> I'd like to say I could take credit for some of it, but I did too. Two sticks. After all that <coughs> hard work, it was time for a proper lunch. What's on the menu, you ask? More sticky rice. By the end of today, Jasmine and I would be, how do I say this politely? Extremely blocked up. The different color of the sticky rice here are dyed from different plants, oh. actually. So this dyed this, yes. and this made this yellow. Yeah. 
First, get a bit of sticky rice, a piece of locally cured pork, as well as a healthy spoon of chili. Mm. <laughs> as some of you may know by now, Jasmine isn't too good with the spice. Okay, try again. <laughs> There's literally nothing on it. Mm. <laughs> Unlike Jasmine, I'm gonna absolutely douse. <laughs> I'm gonna Ouch. douse it in this. Ooh. Amy's like wildly showing off. <laughs> like, see how much I can eat spicy. Mm. Flavor combo is so good because okay, so you've got you the smokiness from that cured meat, the softness from that. <clears throat> is <laughs> a bitch. Just wanted to take a super quick pause from the video to let you guys know that I'm going to be a judge in this year's Chinosity Why Speak Chinese contest. And this year, the prize is a round trip ticket to your closest Chinatown or 500 US dollars cash. And to enter, all you have to do is share your story about how you learned Chinese during the pandemic. To enter the contest, you'll need to create a one minute video introducing yourself and sharing your story. You can include any language learning tips, funny moments, or heartwarming stories, but don't forget to show off your Chinese language skills. Then simply post this video on your TikTok, your Facebook, or your Instagram. Use the hashtags Chinosity and Why Speak Chinese 2022. Don't forget to tag your location and also don't forget to tag Chinosity. The contest is open now and the last day to submit videos is April the 30th. So get cracking and I can't wait to watch your videos. Thanks, back to the video. After a rather impressive carbo load, it was time to get back to our brown sugar making because cutting down the sugar cane is only just the beginning. We have put the sugar cane in the back of the truck and when I say we, I mean he. And now we are going to the top of the mountain to process the sugar cane. The craftsmanship of Bui brown sugar making has been passed down for generations and generations. This here is the ancient sugar mill featuring the traditional hand-pushed wooden juicer. So they have a factory down here actually using machine to do this. So this is just an ancient and original way to show us. So basically what happens, you put a stick of sugar cane here and then someone with bigger muscles than Jasmine will try to push this log around around and as it goes around 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 <laughs> yeah we're doing it teamwork this display of pure power will push the sugar cane through the cogs emptying it of its juice in the process and then down here the juice from the sugar cane will come out Turns out this process works a little bit faster with three grown men pushing the juicer rather than Jasmine and myself. You really don't realize how much juice is in this until it goes in there and it starts like spurting juice. Like this. Last two pieces, last two pieces. Oh. Yay! Yeah. Wow, I'm really tired. My face is hot. It's hot, it's hot. But the hard work is not over yet. We've cut the sugar cane, we've extracted its juice, now it's time to turn it into the famous brown sugar. So we're taking the juice that we've just squeezed and we're putting it, we're sifting it into this big, big, massive wok. And then I guess it's just going to reduce down and gradually make what people use as brown sugar. Then the coolest thing happened. Someone took a sugar cane, dipped it in the sugar and thus birthed the coolest lollipop of my life. This is Dongfang Fang Mo Tang. <laughs> We've got some homemade lollipops here. Let's try. Oh, yum! Oh, tiam. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of like a burnt sugar caramel sugar flavor. Sugar. And with some of the taste of the fresh sugar cane. Yeah, so true. But unbeknownst to us, while we enjoyed our lollipops, people were actually still hard at work inside. Why do I feel like I'm not very good at this manual labor thing? All of that bamboo. And this is the result. <laughs> Not that much. Whoa, thank you. Can you eat? Oh, it's still a little hot. Whoa. Hot. How is it? Hot. 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 Hot.
含就很有满足感。嗯，像这两个手舔过初恋。小时候我们没有饮品，我们就会用这个在水杯里面或者是水瓶里面用热水泡，就当做夏天的饮品带着去上学。So there we go, homemade brown sugar using ancient Bui techniques. But there's one more thing we need to do before dinner, which is scavenge for some food. Ban Wan here is mostly self-sufficient, and there are so many vegetables, herbs, and fruits here for picking. So he's constructing this knife on a stick, a very long stick, and we're going to get down this flour here. And I've been told that it has the consistency, when cooked, of meat. Um, and we're actually going to be eating it tonight. So he's about to get one down so that we can start preparing it for dinner. Whoa! Try. <laughs> wow! I never received a flower like this before. I <laughs> will treasure it. <laughs> so it was time for us to take our flowers and head to tonight's feast at the village chief's house. So this is the chief's house. It's made with all the stone, the most expensive house in the whole village. Whoa. So we're at the village chief's house, where there is just a fire pit in the middle of the house, which I personally haven't seen before. And it, it lets out quite a lot of smoke. All of the smoke that's coming from here is going up here, and guess what's there? A piece of pig that is being cured. <laughs> now that, my friends, is one smoky piece of pork. This here is the village chief. He is also a renowned fortune teller with people coming from far and wide to speak with him. Wow, okay, so this is the flower that we picked off from earlier. Interesting texture. It does look quite meaty. But flour is not the only thing on the menu tonight. There are so many yummy things being whipped up on this walk. And an interesting observation, everyone involved in the cooking process is men. And it seems like not only are they using the stove top to cook, but they're about to put some chilies in the soot here. So the next step is dusting the soot off those chilies, which he does just by blowing on them and patting them. A little bit of soot on the outside for that extra little bit of smoky flavor, I guess. It's then portioned into bowls before the good old salt, MSG, and scallions are added. Wow, look at this spread. And these bowls being dished out here, they're not for soup. They're for alcohol, of which there would be a lot consumed tonight. Oh my gosh. Is it? No. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh I was taken down by it. Really? Yes. Yes. It's my first. <laughs> it smells really good. Yeah. Like a like a candy. It's like a candy. It's like a candy. Okay, let's try. It doesn't feel very alcoholic. It's like gentle and soft. So I guess this is going to be quite dangerous. Because <laughs> we'll just keep drinking it and not realize how much we've drunk. Are we going to do the ending right now? Just in case, you know. Let's do the ending right now. Thanks, guys, for coming to this video. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> I like it. So first thing that I want to try on this table is our fried flour. I think it does have a meatiness. Like I'd say it tastes more like meat than it does flour. I'm gonna try some of this cured meat. Super smoky, but super tender. That's so good. Get another piece. And this piece I dipped right into that fire pit chili sauce. 
Oh, that chili sauce is so good. This is literally the best chili sauce I've ever had. I was a bit confused by this exchange, but it turns out it's customary for the youngest at the table to serve the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so the duty fell to our young friend here. <laughs> it's even more dangerous because it's hard to keep track of how much you've drunk because it keeps getting filled. <laughs> and even when you don't think you want any more, you've still got to say yes when offered and take it with a smile. Jasmine can help me with it. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I have finally, finally drunk my bowl with considerable help from this lady and, and this lady. Girls help girls. Hashtag girls help girls. Oh. After several more bowls, we did our very best to walk out of the chief's house without stumbling and being bested by this alcohol. <laughs> That's it for our day today. I've had the best time and this is not an ad at all, but I really want to support this village. So I want to let you guys know about they have a WeChat account. So if you want to come here and experience what we've experienced and stay here, it's so calm and I'm definitely going to be coming back. Um, their WeChat official account is Aya Banwan. Aya Banwan. Thanks guys for watching this very, very long video. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>